This is the Music History Today podcast for July 25th. On today's show, Dylan plugs in and freaks out your grandparents. A musical partnership begins and ends, and a riot ends a music festival. First up, though, on this date in 1828, Ignaz Bosendorfer got a trade license for him to start his piano manufacturing company. In 1933, the first Dutch radio concert was broadcasted. It was a performance by Duke Ellington. In 1936, jazz musician Charlie Parker married his wife, Rebecca Ruffin. In 1946, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis performed as a vaudeville act for the very first time. Exactly 10 years later to the day, in 1956, the pair, who had become movie and music stars by then, broke up. In 1959, Dolly Parton debuted at the Grand Ole Opry. She was 13 years old at the time. In 1965, acoustic folk rock hero Bob Dylan caused extreme controversy by playing his set at the Newport Folk Festival with an electric guitar. Yes, kids, your grandparents actually freaked out about all of this. It also helped to start the folk rock era. We discuss this insanely controversial event for some goofball reason on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which has dropped on this network by the time you're hearing me speak these words. Please like and subscribe. It's a good episode this week. Comes out every Tuesday. In 1966, Brian Jones played with the Rolling Stones for the final time. In 1966, same day, the Monkees recorded their song, Last Train to Clarksville. In 1969, the Seattle Pop Festival started. In 1978, Public Image Limited was formed. In 1980, drummer Eric Carr played with Kiss for the first time. In 1997, Rick Danko of the group The Band was given a suspended sentence for drug smuggling in Japan. In 1999, the Woodstock 99 Music Festival ended with riots, among many other crimes, including alleged sexual assault. In 2001, Aliyah performed for the last time when she made an appearance on The Tonight Show. And in 2009, Red's Recovery Room, the dive bar that was in the Tom Waits song Filipino Box Spring Hog, closed for good. In classical music in 1976, the Philip Glass opera Einstein on the Beach premiered in France. In theater in 1964, the musical Here's Love closed on Broadway. And in 1975, the musical A Chorus Line debuted on Broadway. Albums that were released in the UK on July 25th include in 1966 when the Trogs released From Nowhere, the Trogs. And in 1969, Yes released their self-titled album. Meanwhile, in America, in 1966, the Trogs released a different album from From Nowhere. They released Wild Thang. In 1970, Creedence Clearwater Revival released Cosmos Factory and Donovan released Open Road. In 1973, Cat Stevens released Foreigner. In 1980, ACDC released their classic Back in Black. And Teddy Pendergrass released TP. In 1983, Metallica released Kill 'Em All. In 1986, the Two Live Crew released The Two Live Crew is What We Are. Also in 1986, Loudness released Lightning Strikes. In 1988, Kim Carnes released View from the House. And Cool in the Gang released Everything's Cool in the Gang, Greatest Hits, and More. In 1989, the Beastie Boys released Paul's Boutique. Alice Cooper released Trash, and the Bee Gees released One. In 1994, The Boredoms released Chocolate Synthesizer. In 1995, 311 released their self-titled album, and Bone Thugs and Harmony released E-1999 Eternal, a classic album. In 2000, Dark Tranquility released Haven, Bella Fleck and the Flecktones released Outbound, and Dion released Deja Nu. In 2006, Tom Petty released Highway Companion and Loverboy released Get Lucky. Singles that were released in the UK on July 25th include in 1980 when Peter Gabriel released Biko, and in 1986 The Cutting Crew released I Just Died in Your Arms. 
Meanwhile, in America, in 1966, the Supremes released You Can't Hurry Love. In 1973, the Doobie Brothers released China Grove. In 1974, Barry White released Can't Get Enough of Your Love, Babe. And in 1977, the Doobie Brothers released Little Darling. Before we continue, we'd like to tell you about the Music History In-Depth podcast, where we go in-depth on the history of some of the events from the daily version of the Music History Today podcast. The Music History In-Depth podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday in audio and video form wherever you get your podcasts. We also have the Music Halls of Fame podcast, where we honor a year in music along with a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, along with who we think should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Plus, we honor a different museum, Walk of Fame, or Hall of Fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday in audio and video form wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to the Music History Today podcast. Artists who were born on July 25th include Thurston Moore of Sonic Youth, Verdon White of Earth, Wind & Fire, Mark Clark of Uriah Heep, Singer Steve Goodman, Chapito Arias of Santana, Jim McCarty of the Yardbirds, Bruce Woodley of the Seekers, Manny Charlton of Nazareth, jazz musician Don Ellis, Benny Benjamin of the Motown studio musician group The Funk Brothers, country music singer Roy Acuff Jr., Dutch singer Vanessa, musician and composer of commercial jingles Tom Dawes, Ken Greer of the group Red Rider, Trevor Perez of Obituary, singer Sarah Geronimo, rapper Mac Lethal, rapper Lil Fat, music producer Jax Jones, country music singer Roger Krieger, Danny Filth of Cradle of Filth, country music singer Marty Brown, Maureen Herman of Babes in Toyland, Rudy West of the Five Keys, bassist Gunter Lenz, Music journalist for Blues and Rhythm magazine, Dave Penny, drummer Brian Blade with the San Francisco Jazz Collective, singer Alex Bilbo of Girl Authority, harmonica player Robert Lucas, jazz singer Annie Ross of the group Lambert Hendricks and Ross, pianist Jeff Gilson, guitarist Gene Phillips, and trombone player Norman Green. Artists who unfortunately passed away on July 25th include composer Nicholas Saboli, who passed away in 1675 at the age of 61. Organist Johann Altnickel passed away in 1759 at the age of 39. Composer Charles Dibden passed away in 1814 at the age of 69. Pianist Alois Schmidt passed away in 1866 at the age of 77. Songwriter Pierre Dupont passed away in 1870 at the age of 49. Composer Filippo Capocci passed away in 1911 at the age of 71. Composer Yaroslav Zelinsky passed away in 1922 at the age of 75. Singer Jack Judge passed away in 1938 at the age of 65. Composer Herbert Murrell passed away in 1952 at the age of 43. Composer Ilmari Hanakanen passed away in 1955 at the age of 62. Film composer Isaac Dernayevsky passed away in 1955 from heart issues at the age of 55. Composer Douglas Stewart Moore passed away in 1969 at the age of 75. Composer Leroy Robertson passed away in 1971 at the age of 74. Singer and poet Vladimir Stofsky passed away in 1980 at the age of 42. Composer Jerome Morose passed away in 1983 at the age of 69. Blues great Big Mama Thornton passed away from heart and liver disorders in 1984 at the age of 57. Studio 54 nightclub co-owner Steve Rubel passed away from AIDS-related illness in 1989 at the age of 54, ironically. Singer Alfred Drake passed away in 1992 at the age of 78. Multi-instrumentalist John M. Dengler of the intensely vigorous jazz band passed away from cancer in 1994 at the age of 67. 
Country artist Charlie Rich passed away in 1995 at the age of 62. Composer Osvaldo Pugliese passed away in 1995 at the age of 89. Jazz guitarist Tal Farlow passed away in 1998 at the age of 77. Musician Eric Brand passed away in 2003 at the age of 53. Eric was with the group Iron Butterfly. Trombonist Albert Mangelsdorf passed away in 2005 at the age of 77. Saxophonist Johnny Griffin III passed away in 2008 at the age of 80. Jazz guitarist Hiram Bullock of Paul Schaefer and the World's Most Dangerous Band passed away from cancer in 2008 at the age of 52. World War I vet Harry Patch, who was immortalized in Radiohead's song Harry Patch in Memory Of, passed away in 2009 at the age of 111. Audio engineer Mike Shipley committed suicide in 2013 at the age of 56. Composer Patrick Williams passed away in 2018 at the age of 79. And Peter Green of Fleetwood Mac passed away in 2020 at the age of 73. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is July 26th, when in 1943, Mick Jagger was born, and in 1923, the world lost the incomparable Sinead O'Connor. Thank you very, very much for listening, if you're listening on the podcast, or if you're watching this on YouTube or Spotify video. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share this podcast. And if you like this podcast and you want more of our podcasts, then I invite you to check out our Music Halls of Fame podcast in either audio or video form. It drops every single Thursday. You can listen to the audio version of this podcast on Apple, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, wherever you get your podcasts from, all under Music History Today. You can also watch the video version of this podcast on either YouTube or Spotify Video, also under Music History Today. Our Facebook page is Music History Today. Our website is jameritaniamedia.com. And our Twitter is twitter.com backslash Music History Day. Thank you very, very much for listening or watching.